With the refret out of the way, I was able to replace the tuners uh, with some Stumac Golden Age tuners that I actually had sitting around the house uh, from a different failed project. Um, and I bought a new ebony bridge to put on here. And so once I strung up the guitar, um, I could tell almost immediately that the geometry was off. And if you look at it like this, the action of this guitar right now is about three-eighths of an inch at uh, the 12th fret, which um, is fine. I actually tuned it, tuned it to open G uh, and goofed around on slide for a little bit. Um, but, you know, I was hoping this would be a little bit more of a strummer type guitar. You know, even if I were to keep this just playing slide, um, the strings are so high that you actually can't really press down um, the strings to, you know, occasionally fret notes, you know, when you're not playing slide. Um, because the action is so high that, you know, the string ends up being sharp anytime you, you press this down. So what occurred to me was, even though this arch top bridge uh, has no more room to go down, uh, I could either cut the bridge or uh, I could try and make a new one. And so I don't exactly know what I'm gonna do here, to be honest. Um, I'm going to, you know, loosen up the tension first, try and figure out how far down I need to go to make this have reasonable action. And then once I, you know, get that measurement, uh, then I'll decide to either try and, you know, modify this bridge or uh, use a piece of scrap wood um, to, to build a, a different one. So taking the bridge out, obviously this is too low, but this already gives me, you know, a bit of an idea of how far I'm actually going to need to go um, to make this action reasonable. And so Usually, uh, arch top bridges uh, that are adjustable at least, um, you can take the top piece off. And so if I slide this back in here, that's actually not too bad. I mean, I haven't tensioned up the strings yet. Um, but to know that I can actually go down that far or that I need to go down that far um, is going to keep me from you know, cutting up uh, this bottom part. Uh, but I'm still wondering if I should try and make a new bridge. Um, you know, this ebony bridge at Stumac, I don't know, it was maybe, you know, $20. And so it's not the worst thing in the world if I do modify that. Um, but at the same time, $20 is $20. I could try and save this for a different project. Um, yeah, let's let me try. I think I have a, a, a plastic... Uh, classical bridge uh, left around somewhere. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so the classical or acoustic saddle that I have is clearly too low, um, which is actually a great sign because what that means is, is I can actually build a, a wooden piece underneath this uh, to bring it up a little bit and then, um, you know, selectively as I kind of figure out the right height, I can either sand the bridge down or, um, you know, file this, this plastic bridge down. So I think what I'm going to do is actually use this saddle because this, this saddle is tremendously cheap. Um, I, I think it was less than uh, $3 uh, as a multi-pack on Amazon. And then, you know, take a piece of, of you know, scrap maple or, or, or something um, and actually make, make a bridge that, that fits for this guitar. And then we'll be in really good shape because a lot of the time that I spent uh, before refretting was actually leveling the board. And so if I can get the string action height um, correct at the bridge, uh, I'll probably end up making a new nut as well because the nut uh, is just, you know, complete garbage. And then uh, we should have both a, a strummable guitar as well of, as a, a good slide guitar. So I had this piece of flame maple. It uh, looks like it's an off cut from a body that I might have done. And so uh, it looks like this guitar is going to get a slightly fancier bridge. So now what I'm going to do is just, um, you know, find a, a piece 
uh, and, and cut this roughly to length. Um, this is clearly way too thick um, for the amount of uh, actual bridge I need. And so I'll work on uh, getting that taken care of in a little bit. Um, but first I'll go to the chop saw and just make uh, this plank uh, roughly the size that I need. Looks like I'll have far less waste if I use this area. And so um, I'll cut this off from here. Since I have more of this flame maple, I'm just going to eyeball the cut. Um, what I did was I put the, the bridge here and drew a line effectively, you know, how high this piece is. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is go through, uh, go on my bandsaw, um, slice this down some, and then do a little bit of sanding um, on my belt sander just to, you know, kind of square up the edges, make them nice and smooth. Uh, before I cut in a slot uh, to, to put the saddle into. It's not perfectly even right now, uh, but it's nothing that a little sanding won't fix. And so now what I'm gonna do is actually take this over to uh, my belt sander and clean it up a little bit, and then uh, figure out where I'm going to um, mount the saddle uh, inside this uh, new bridge plate. Just by eye, this looks to be about the right angle for the saddle, because this is an uncompensated uh, saddle blank you know, it's going to be in a perfect straight line anyway. And so what I can do when I actually go to set the, the intonation is, is just move it, you know, just slightly back and forth. Um, you know, as I've kind of mentioned before, for a hundred dollar guitar, uh, I'm not aiming for perfection. I'm aiming for, you know, something just kind of cool. And so what I'm going to do now is just trace around um, the outline of this and then figure out how I'm going to actually cut that slot uh, into my maple blank. Not the best, but not the worst fit in the world. Obviously, we have some friction here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is use a little bit of CA glue to pin this in place. And then if I want to adjust uh, the, the height anymore, what I'll do is I'll actually run, run this over a sanding block um, to bring the, the action down a little further. It's been a couple of days that I've let this project sit. And I went back and tried to hollow out the bottom of the bridge using a bowl cutter router bit. Um, and as these things sort of go, uh, I messed up and I uh, routed through here. And so this is likely um, not gonna be nearly strong enough to use. And so now what I'm back to, I think, is trying to reuse the ebony um, compensated saddle that I have here and just trying to figure out what the proper uh, height is. Um, it's unfortunate that that one didn't work out, um, but given the difficulty that I had actually carving out the uh, slot, 
Um, I think I'm just going to be way better off if I can figure out um, the exact right height of the piece of wood I need to put underneath this is. In putting the arch top, um, top of the bridge here, I think this is almost the right, right string height. In fact, it's probably slightly low. So I think I'm going to do is I have this piece of um, eighth inch, I guess it's Chechen wood. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is actually cut off uh, a piece of this, uh, glue it to the bottom here, and then uh, that should be more than enough height to where I can go back and actually sand it down a little bit um, to, to set the correct string height. So I'll let this sit for a couple of hours to dry, then I'll come back and, and trim off all the excess. With the glue dried, I fit the bridge piece to see how much an improvement we've gotten so far. And I have my digital calipers here. Um, the action of the 12th fret used to be 3 eighths of an inch, which is just way too high. And so hopefully we've dropped this down a little bit. Okay, so now the, the action is just under a quarter of an inch, and so we've dropped uh, an eighth of an inch so far um, at the 12th fret of the action. Uh, an eighth of an inch might not sound like a lot, but it is actually, you know, quite considerable. Um, but as you can see, you know, the action is still quite high. Um, the good thing is, is that even with my test fitting here, I, I added an eighth of an inch piece. Um, so when I trim off the excess here, the next step will actually be to sand this down a little bit uh, to try and get the action down. The other thing um, that lowering the action has actually pointed out is, you know, the nut here is actually completely destroyed. Um, I don't know if it was just back in the day they didn't have the right tools or, or somebody else was doing this, but um, the nut slots aren't cut correctly. And so what I'm going to do is um, make a replacement uh, nut uh, out of bone and attach that here. And we should be able to get this uh, guitar to pretty, pretty low action. I spent about an hour working on putting the slots in the nut and then uh, filing down the bridge a little bit. And I'm at a pretty good place in terms of action. I think the guitar would probably um, do better with acoustic strings on it. Uh, right now I have flat wounds just because that's uh, what I had laying around. As a project, this guitar is pretty cool. Uh, I ended up spending $100 uh, to actually get the um, the pieces of this guitar. Uh, the tuners I think are about $30. Uh, the bridge about $20. I think maybe $15 for um, the frets. And so $165. Uh, it does play as an instrument. Um, if I'm being honest, it's not the best sounding instrument I have. Um, you know, but to, to take it from uh, a guitar that came held together by rubber bands to a playable instrument is pretty cool. So thanks for watching. Uh, that's going to be it for this project. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this guitar. Um, maybe I'll hang it on the wall. Mm -hmm.